Hello, dear students. Welcome to UGC lecture series on botany. The topic for today's lecture is general account of lichens. In this very lecture, we will try to answer following few queries. 1. What are lichens? 2. What are they composed of? 3. Why do they occur? 4. What is the structure of their body? 5. How do they reproduce? And 6. Do they serve any purpose? Let's first introduce lichens. The term lichen was used for the first time by Theophrastus to denote a superficial growth on the tree barks. In the dictionary of fungi, a lichen has been defined as a stable self-supporting association of a mycobiont and a phycobiont. The branch of botany which is concerned with the study of lichens is called lichenology and a scientist who has specialized in the study of lichens is called a lichenologist. The lichens are a small group of curious plants with about 15,000 species spread over 400 genera and 60 families. Some lichens are estimated to be more than 4,500 years old. Composition of lichens. A lichen is such an association of an alga and a fungus in which two organisms remain so closely associated with each other that they appear to be a single plant. The fungal component of lichens is generally an ascomycete. In only two or three genera out of 400, the fungal component is a basidiomycete and only rarely a deteriomycete. The fungal component, which is also called the mycobiont, provides the structural covering that protects the algal component, also called the phycobiont, from unfavorable conditions like drought, heat, etc. The fungus also traps moisture in the atmosphere and anchors the lichen to a rock, tree bark, leaves, etc. The alga prepares organic food by the process of photosynthesis. If the algal component is a cyanobacterium, that is blue-green algae, it fixes atmospheric nitrogen in addition to preparation of food. An extraordinary thing about the lichens is that the new individual resulting from this association differs considerably from either of the partners in form and habit. It also has a physiology of its own. It is difficult to synthesize lichen from its components in the laboratory. The synthesis has been accomplished only when the alga and fungus are exposed to citrusful conditions such as wetting and drying, suggesting that lichens form in nature under similar challenging conditions. Let us find out why do these lichens occur. The lichens grow in a wide variety of habitats from Arctic to Antarctic where most plants cannot survive. Some lichens are able to live where there is no other vegetation and thus prove important colonizers of bare rocks. The most usual habitats of lichens are tree barks, decaying woods, leaves, branches, barren rocks, buildings, icy tundra or alpines, walls, window pans, and in many inhospitable places that can dry out. Lichens occupy exposed habitats of high light intensity. Their fungal component or mycobiont often produce bright yellow, orange or red colored compounds that help prevent damage to lichens photosynthetic apparatus. Mycobiont also produce a distinctive organic acids and other compounds that deter hungry animals and microbial attacks. Based on their place of occurrence, lichens may fall in following six groups. First, 
corticolous lichens. These lichens develop on bark of trees. For example, species of Parmelia and Osnia. Second, lignicolous lichens. They develop directly on wood. For example, species of Calicicum and Cyphelium. Third group, Sexicolous lichens. These lichens develop on rocky substrata. For example, species of Porina and Xanthora. Fourth group of these lichens is Tericolous lichens. These lichens grow on the ground. For example, species of Caledonia and Colima. Fifth group of such lichens is marine lichens. These lichens develop on siliceous rocky shores of sea. For example, species of Verucaria and Caloplaca. And last group of these lichens is freshwater lichens. These lichens develop on hard siliceous rocks in freshwater. For example, species of Hymenalia and Ephiba. Classification of lichens. Under the rules of International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, that is ICBN, no taxonomic significance is attached to the algal component of lichens. The lichen classification is based solely on the fungal partner. It is because the thalli and the fruiting bodies of the lichens are largely fungal in structure. According to Miller, lichens are assigned the subdivision status in the true fungi or eumycophyta and are divided into two classes. First class is ascolichens. Here the fungal partner composing the lichens is an ascomycotina and second class is basidiolichens. In these lichens, Fungal partner belongs to Basidio mycotina. Alexopolis and Mims divided lichens into three groups as under. First group, Ascolichens. In these lichens, fungal partner is an Ascomycotina. Second group is Basidio lichens. Here, fungal partner is from Basidio mycotina. And the third group is Deterio lichens. These are sterile lichens that do not produce spores. Let us look into the structure of lichens. External structure of lichens reveals that plant body in this group of plants is a thallus. It is a gray or grayish green irregularly shaped structure. Some species are strongly pigmented and may be bluish, green, gray, yellow, orange, red, and brown in color. Hawksworth described the following five morphological categories of lichen thallus. First category is leprose lichens. This is the simplest type of thallus organization in which the fungal hyphae envelops either single or small cluster of algal cells. The so formed simple lichen thallus grows superficially over the substratum and provides a powdery appearance. For example, Lepraria in Cana. Second category is crustose lichens. The algal cells are covered by a distinct layer of fungal tissue. The surface of thallus is usually divided into more or less hexagonal areas called the areolac. The thallus is very closely adhered to the substratum and provides a crust-like appearance. For example, species of graphis. Third category is folios lichens. The thallus here is flat, leaf-like, well-branched, lobed, and attached to the substratum with the help of rhizoid-like rhizines. The external appearance is like that of wrinkled and twisted leaves. For example, species of Parmelia. Fourth category is fruticose lichens. The lichens are well-branched, erect, 
are pendular structures which provide shrubby appearance. The thallus is attached only at the base by a flattened disc, for example, species of asnea. Fifth category of these lichens is filamentous lichens. In this type of lichens, the algal partner is filamentous, well developed and remains covered by only a few fungal hyphae. These lichens have the dominance of algal partner. Internal structure of lichen thallus reveals that it is formed by fungal partner in bulk. The alga constitutes about 5% of the lichen body. Internally, lichen thalli may be homoiomerous, that is, undifferentiated thallus with irregularly distributed algae, or it may be heteromerous, that is, thallus differentiated into distinct zones with algal partner restricted to a particular zone. Heteromerous thallus show following four distinct zones. One, surface layer or cortex. Second, algal zone or gonadial layer. Third, medulla or interior. And fourth, rhizines. Reproduction of lichens. Lichens reproduce both by asexual and sexual methods. Asexually, these lichens reproduce by vegetative methods and sporulation. Vegetative methods of asexual reproduction include fragmentation, isidia, and soridia formation. In fragmentation, the thallus breaks into small segments, each of which develops into new thallus under favorable conditions. It is a major method of reproduction in fruticose lichens, for example, species of Bryuria. Isidia formation. Isidia are small, corticated outgrowths made up of both fungal hyphae and algal cells and are situated on the upper surface of the lichen thallus. They are constructed basally and are easily broken away from the thallus. A detached isidium develops into a new lichen thallus, for example, species of Parmelia. Suridia formation. These are small bud-like outgrowths which develop in the form of a grayish white powder over the upper surface or edges of the thallus of lichens. Sometimes they develop in spatial, posture-like areas called soralia. These are made up of only a few algal cells surrounded by only a few fungal hyphae. Each soridium, after falling on a suitable substratum, germinates into a new lichen thallus, for example, species of Bryuria and Parmelia. Sporulation is another kind of asexual means of reproduction in lichens. In this method, the fungal partner produces small, non-motile asexual spores, known as pycnidiospores. These are produced in spatial flask-shaped cavities called the pycnidia. Each pycnidium opens to the surface through a small pore called an osteole. The wall of pycnidium consists of sterile hyphae. The pycnidiospores on germination produce fungal hyphae which after coming in contact with an appropriate alga, develop further into new lichen. Sexual reproduction in lichens. This mode of reproduction in lichens is concern of the fungal partner of lichen thallus. The male reproductive organ here is called the supermogonium and the female reproductive organ the carpogonium. Structure of supermogonia. In some species of lichens, 
The pycnidia like structures function as supermogonia. Each supermogonium is a flask shaped structure and opens by a small pore called an osteole. The cavity of supermogonium is filled with the sterile and fertile hyphae. The fertile hyphae cut off small rounded cells at their tips, which are male gametes and are called the supermatia. They are non motile and are produced in large numbers in each receptacle. The supermatia are set free in a slimy mass which ooze out through the osteole. Structure of Carpogonium The Carpogonium is a special cellular filament and consists of two portions. The lower coiled portion called the Ascogonium and the upper straight portion called the trichogyne. The ascogonium lies deep in the medullary region of the thallus. The terminal portion of trichogyne ends in a long cell which projects beyond the surface of the thallus and has a gelatinous cell wall. Fertilization in lichens. Supermatia adhere to the gelatinous wall of the projecting terminal cell of the trichogyne. At the point of contact, the intervening walls of the supermatium and the trichogyne dissolve. The contents of the supermatium migrate through the pore into the trichogyne. After fertilization, many ascogenous hyphae develop from the basal portion of the ascogonium. SI develop on the ends of these freely branched ascogenous hyphae. Two nuclei of the ascus cell fuse to form a diploid nucleus. The later divides and redivides to form eight haploid daughter nuclei. These ascus bearing structures are called ascomata. The ascomata or ascocorps may be either of perithecium or apothecium type. The perithecium is a flask shaped structure and the SI are born within a locule. The apothecium is a cup shaped fruiting body in which the ascus bearing tissue or hymenium is exposed at maturity. The ascospores are discharged and start germination by producing hyphal branches. A hyphal branch comes in contact with a suitable alga and results in a lichen thallus. Let us see if these lichens are serving any purpose under the heading Economic Importance of Lichens. Lichens are pioneers of rock vegetation as they are able to establish themselves on bare rocks, cliffs, mountains and new terrains. They secrete some soluble organic acids which cause weathering of rocks. Dead organic remains of lichen thalli mix with these fine rock particles which ultimately becomes very fertile for other plants to grow. Certain species of lichens are valuable sources of food. For example, Caledonia rangiferina which is also called the reindeer moss, serve as food for reindeer, caribou, musk ox and other wild animals of the Arctic tundra zone. A few species have been used as food by man. For example, Parmelia, Citraria islandica and Lecanora esculenta. The edible lichens are harvested and dried for human consumption or as food for cattle, swine and horses. Lichens have immense medicinal importance. For example, arsenic acid obtained from species of Asnia and Caledonia has antibiotic properties and is used in the preparation of ointment for burns and wounds. Erythrin obtained from Rosilla montagni is used in angina 
a serious heart disease. Xanthoria parietina is used for the treatment of joints. Parmelia sexitalis, another species of lichens, is used for the treatment of epilepsy. Peltigera canina, which is also called the dog lichen, is used as a cure for hydrophobia. Loberia pulmonaria, also called the lung wort, is used in the treatment of lung diseases. Avernia purpuratia is used in cough. A mucilaginous substance obtained from Cetraria islandica is used as laxative. Lichens are used in perfumery. For example, Loberia pulmonaria and Avernia prunastri are widely used in the manufacture of perfumes. The sweet scented thallus of Ramalina and Avernia is used in the preparation of dup, Havan Samagri and soap. Lichens are important in dyeing and tanning processes. For example, a litmus paper, a pH indicator, is prepared from Rosilla Montagni and La Celia postulata. Brown dye obtained from Parmelia omphalodes is used to dye wool and silic fibers. The astringent property of Cetraria islandica and Loberia pulmonaria make them useful in tanning purposes. Lichens play their role in braving and distillation industries. For example, Cetraria islandica and Caledonia rangiferina are used to obtain alcohol. Certain lichens yield some useful organic acids such as lacnoric acid, carbonic acid, arsenic acid, etc. Lichens are indicators of air pollution. Thus, decrease in lichen population in an area indicates air pollution. Consequently, Many environmental studies with lichens emphasize their feasibility as effective biomonitors of atmospheric quality. Lichens are good indicators of atmospheric radiation levels because they accumulate radioactive substances from the air. For example, after the Chernobyl nuclear power plant accident, lichens in nearby countries became so radioactive that reindeer, a kind of animal which consume lichens as major food source, became unfit for human use as food or in milk production. Thank you.